and so important to be talking about financials and getting a handle on your financials as a small business owner um, is a key step in terms of working on your business. But it's also key to have someone working with you on those financials and having a banker and a bank that you trust. Nicole Elam, I am so glad that you are with us from the National Bankers Association to answer a question that is on almost the mind of every American small business owner or consumer, which is how do I make sure that where I have my money, it is safe and I can get access to it easily? That is certainly a question that is top of mind for everybody, and it's become even more important with the recent bank closures. But here's what I would say. Your money is safe. Your money is safe. More than 90% of the accounts that are at a small bank are under $250,000. So they are fully FDIC insured. And for those accounts that are over $250,000, what you will find is that banks have access to products and programs so that they can take in large deposits and ensure all of it is FDIC insured. But guess what? You only know about that if you have an established banking relationship. If you know your banker, you can call them, talk to them, and talk about how safe your money is. So your money is indeed safe. Well, one of the things that I think it's very important to ask is whether or not your bank is part of a banking network so that if perchance you have more than $250,000 that you want to keep in a bank, that you want to have liquid for payroll, for invoices, for other large business um, expenses, mm -hmm. you can do that through a banking network to have more than $250,000, um, that much in one bank and then more yeah. in another bank. How do you find out about that? Uh, again, is that having the relationship with the bank? Tell me a little bit about banking networks mm -hmm. and how that could protect business owners who may have more than $250,000. Yeah, you're exactly right. They're called reciprocal deposit programs. And that's uh, what's so important about having a conversation and a relationship with your bank. You can ask those types of questions. Most banks are a part of these types of programs and products where they can access these networks of other banks, where they can spread deposits that are over $250,000 across a network of banks to ensure that it is all FDIC insured. Now, one of the ways that we hear a lot of businesses ask questions about these types of accounts is for their payroll accounts. Now, one of the biggest lessons that came out of the bank failure is that it really wasn't about uh, the government stepping in because they didn't want a bank to fail. While that was certainly important, one of the biggest driving factors is that you wanted to make sure that businesses were going to be able to pay their workers. It's about, it was about those payroll accounts. And so when you have access to these types of networks, when your bank is participating in these type of reciprocal deposit programs, they can ensure that all of their deposit is fully FDIC insured. But the key is calling your bank and having an established banking relationship. So you've said that now three times, having an established banking relationship. You yes. believe that is most important. Tell me how you establish that relationship for those people who may be just starting their business or those who've had mm -hmm. been in business a long time but aren't sure if they have the kind of relationship they should have. What are some of the steps you need to take to build that relationship? What should you be looking for? Mm -hmm. So you know you have an established banking relationship if somebody knows you and your business. If you have somebody that you can pick up the phone and call, you have a banker that you can pick up the phone and call, or you have a team of folks that you can pick up the phone and call and talk to. That's the importance of having an established banking relationship. Now, you can establish that in a couple of different ways. You can walk into your community bank. You can walk into your local minority-owned and operated bank, and you can meet a banker, establish that relationship, and have that person who knows who you are. Or if there's a number, you can pick up the phone and call that number. I would say, though, that those banks, what we found during the pandemic, those banks that had established banking relationships fared better. They learned about PPP. They had somebody to walk them through the process and help them make sure that those loans were forgiven. And a lot of that was happening with community banks and small banks, those banks that you can walk into or you can pick up the phone and you can get somebody on the phone and you can talk to them about what's going on. Well, some people maybe see the headlines about these bank failures and regional banks, mm -hmm. smaller banks, and say, wait a minute, she's now telling us to go to smaller banks, community banks, minority-owned banks, and what if they have the same issues as Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank? 
what do we do to make sure that we don't fall into that trap, that we don't establish a relationship with a bank that may not be there tomorrow? What can you tell us about your member banks as the president of the National mm -hmm. Bankers Association? How, how safe is your money in yeah. those banks? That's a great question. Most people don't understand that Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, those weren't your traditional banks, right? They weren't a bank that served consumers, individuals, or small businesses or commercials. They were the bank of tech and venture capital. And those aren't the types of banks that my members serve. So I would say one, these are banks that operate traditional banking models. And so they are very conservative and safe. The second thing that I would say is that they have strong capital. Over the last three years, you have seen minority banks in particular grow in asset size by 35%. And black banks in particular have grown by 56% in asset size. So they've got adequate capital. Why does that matter? It matters because if people want to pull out their money, there's enough cash on hand to allow them to do that. That was not in place at the banks that failed in March. And so they've got adequate capital, strong capital and liquidity levels. And so that leads to your money being safe and protected. So adequate capital, strong liquidity levels. Are there other buzzwords mm -hmm. that I should use as a small business owner going to a bank to just check them and make sure that they understand that I know what they need to be doing with my money? What are some of those questions that I need to ask? And I'm thinking about those people who may have yeah. just recently got into becoming a founder of a startup mm -hmm. or do, and they're watching this, that they may mm -hmm. be in, in a tech field. How do you make sure you're asking the questions? What do I need to be asking? So I think one of the biggest things that small business need to be paying attention to is preparation, right? How prepared are you? Because that's one of the biggest challenges that people have, right? It's this question of, is my money safe? But I think the biggest question that people are also asking is, how do I access capital in this environment? We know that the interest rates are rising. More than 50% of small businesses have a challenge with this raise, rising interest rate environment and their ability to access capital at a high rate. And so one of the things that we're finding, though, with their inability to access capital is their lack of preparation. Most small businesses aren't prepared. They're not capital ready. What do I mean by that? I mean that they don't have their books in orders. They don't have their bank records, their financial records, their filings. There's not proper, proper documentation in place for a bank to assess the strength of the business, their cash flows, their revenue. Are they able to pay payroll? Are they paying payroll taxes? That's really the biggest thing that is leading to most folks not being able to access capital in an environment right now where it's going to be harder to access capital. So preparation is key. And what I would say to small businesses is just as much time as you spend in perfecting your widget, whether it's that good, that service, you want to spend just as much time perfecting the operations of your finances so that you can be capital ready and take on capital. Do you remember banks, and again, the National Bankers Association representing minority-owned banks, women-owned banks, um, do you have workshops and at resources for business owners to make sure that they're prepared properly? Absolutely. What I would say is the difference between a minority bank and a, and a community bank uh, versus a big bank is their focus on coaching. They understand that it's not just about capital, but it's about the coaching as well. It's immersed in the DNA of minority banks. And so they spend a lot of time on a one on one basis working with small business owners to ensure that they have everything that they need to be, if you will, recession proof, right? I would say that there's no such thing as recession proof, but there is a such thing as being prepared. And so these banks are focusing again, not just on capital, but on coaching to make sure that they can withstand what's coming. Not only do they focus on the handholding and walking through with them, but they also talk to them about other resources that may be available. Resources that may be available through the Small Business Administration, maybe state and local small business association programs, or even the Minority Business Development Agency has a number of programs and resources that are available. So again, it's establishing that relationship with a bank so that they know exactly what your needs are and can perhaps suggest some alternative funding that you may not have considered. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And one big thing that's uh, out right now is the state small business credit initiative program. It's a $10 billion program that came down from the federal government and it's being dispersed through state and local and tribunal governments. That is something that many minority banks know about and they can make sure that the small businesses that they serve understand how they can get plugged in and access that funding.